Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective is one of my favorite game series. I love running around the map, trying to find the answers for not only the main mystery, but side small mysteries that, of course, by the end, when you try to answer questions, Sherlock already knows the answer to. That being said, I did not believe that the mechanics had to be tied to him. I believe this was a game that could spread out to other properties. Most notably, I tend to say the world of Lovecraft. Now it seems that has come to fruition with the Bureau of Investigation. Will this game be the perfect marriage of my dreams? Or did I make a bad wish to a dark elder god? Before we begin, you should know if you don't know anything about Sherlock Consulting Detective, it is a mystery solving game. I will not be going into full spoiler details of the cases, I'm going to try to hide most things, but if you are the kind of person who doesn't even want to see like a screenshot or anything that could spoil the, the suspense, then you might want to wait until we're done with the explanation. Now, most games will give you the case book, which will explain what's going on and where you'll read for different numbers wherever you need to go. So for example, I don't want to open this up right now, but if you wanted to visit this location, you would visit 21 in the West Central area. There are different parts of the map and there are other maps. There are extra components like the newspaper here that are useful in helping find hints and leads for you to go through. And of course, there is a directory for you to look up people or certain locations in case you need to visit St. Mary's Hospital or the Arkham Asylum. If you played Sherlock, all of this is very familiar to you. This is pretty much how all the other ones go. But let's actually start going over some of the differences. Now, I'm going to try really hard, but you may notice in the edge here that there is interviewer and investigation for locations. When you choose a location, you can decide to interview or investigate. Pretty much, you either go there to talk to people. Investigating tends to be more of like staking out and following people, more of like the seeing what's going on. So you have to decide not just if that location is important to you, but whether you think it's important that because you, you need to discuss things with people, or if you think they're going to lie to you, just tail them and see what they're doing there. The other thing is in the questions. Now, in Sherlock, once you either feel confident or have used up all your time, you're going to be asked a bunch of questions which you don't know until you look at them of things usually involving the main case, like who is the murder suspect? How did they do it? Where did they escape? As well as maybe some side questions you may or may not have come across, such as what happened to the dog? Or where was this item found? Or what was John doing? Things that aren't technically related to the murder case, but interesting side things you may have discovered along the way. In this one, however, they're just going to ask for three locations. You don't need to write anything down. You don't need a name like, oh, it was Barry Johnson. You just be like 21 West, 22 East. You could go blind and just guess because you have all the locations listed on the map and in the directory. The concept is in this one, when Sherlock, you tended to play through while they were standalone, you were the same group of people, the irregulars. In this each one honestly is standalone. This feels more like you're reading Lovecraft's collection of short stories, and you could probably go in any order, though the order they have is from easier to most difficult. So case one here, for example, is much simpler, and of course, would be most recognizable to Sherlock fans. But as we go on, the other real big thing is case two, it's got a unique mechanic, but nothing I think that would throw off people from Sherlock. But once you hit case three, you're going to have something that's much different than what you're used to. And even case four, which I have over here, comes in this big fat envelope. So lots of weird stuff there. The idea being they really try to change mechanics on you and not just make the same sort of follow the breadcrumbs kind of mystery that you may be used to. So not only are the cases standalone, they almost are mechanically different from one another. You'll have to think differently and keep track of different notes in different ways and expect different answers, or at least the kind of answers you'd give depending on the case. And I should warn you, just like in many of the Lovecraftian novellas and short stories, you should probably not expect a happy little ending for most of them. Now, how does this compare? 
to Sherlock first. There's another game we're definitely going to have to compare this to, but we're going to focus on Sherlock since that's this is technically under its family, its umbrella. I feel the locations, asking for locations instead of like a specifically named character, makes it easier. In, I don't know if it's a bad or a good thing. I really wish, I like the idea of asking for just a location, but I do like sometimes having to name something. I wish there was a mix of some answers or maybe some bonus ones would be the naming things. The idea of not being part of a, I mean, you're part of the Bureau of Investigation. The whole idea is you're a new special task force to deal with spooky things. The, the, you, the fact you play these different agents, when I first read the first case and I was like, oh, did I, I don't think I'm playing the same person in Act 2. I was a little like, oh, I, I like distraught. But then after going, thinking about it, and especially playing through the arrest, I was like, this this fits the Lovecraftian theme. Most people shouldn't come out unscathed. You should come out pretty scarred. So I actually think that works out well. And, of course, this way you can just play in the order or even if you thought one case was particularly good, you could give that to someone. Speaking of cases, all the other Sherlocks come with 10. This one comes with 5. I understand they had the, each one's different, which means a whole lot more work. But I think it would have been fine if we had even just two more cases that are more like the classic Sherlock. You know, you, you'd you get like half-ish you could say 3.5 almost, depending on how you view case two of the classic Sherlock consulting detective style. And then we get really weird with the other options. I will say for the five cases, the fact that each one has the unique mechanics, I really do appreciate and did throw me in a good way, you know, like unexpected twists and turns that aren't the story kind, you know, you you don't expect what's in this envelope, which I... I, I can't say more than that. Now, what about on the Lovecraftian side? And we have to bring this up now because of another game called Mythos Tales. Mythos Tales also followed the same system, but it was not under the same company. I do not think it is in print anymore. You have to probably buy it very hard secondhand. But same idea. You followed in the world of Arkham of Through Mysteries with Armitage instead of Sherlock guiding you along the way. Well, this one plays, I feel, more to Lovecraft's writing than the idea of the Lovecraft world. What I mean by that is these, as I stated, are all standalone cases. And because of that, you shouldn't expect the investigator to make it to the next one. It's designed, I feel, just like a bunch of these short stories would be written with the idea of being like, this one's focusing on this sort of weird scenario and this one's focusing on this one, which also comes out mechanically. Uh, that said, I will say that this one that I keep showing off was probably, I feel, the most Lovecraftian, at least classic. It has to do with the kind of stuff that I don't think you need too much of an introduction if you've played some Lovecraftian board games. The rest, however, I actually think needs a lot more than what you're used to. I have played tons of Lovecraft games. I know most names, and obviously if you put certain symbols or colors, references, they're going to catch my eye, and I might be like, uh-oh, this doesn't sound good. In the I'm excited to see what happens next what kind of way. This one, I felt like really tried to, like, I feel like you'd have to be really good at catching some deep cuts to recognize some of the, like, Lovecraft. And in some ways, some people may like it. They, they might be happy that this doesn't just, like, drool like there's 25 star spawn running around but i also felt like some of the times i was just sort of surprised like oh that's okay i guess that was involved and that's a problem because mythos tales which i'll get more into comparing the two later but has armitage as your sherlock your your backstop who you can usually go to for questions about lore in the world of Lovecraft. This has no expert like that. No one you can go to if you want to know more of how Cthulhu works in Star Spawn or Space Out of Color, whether or not these actually do appear in this story. 
So because of that, I feel there's a lot weirdly while the mechanics and the questions are simpler to solve by just naming locations, the onus and expectation of Lovecraftian knowledge is actually lower slightly higher, at least that I felt. And I mean, if you watch this channel enough, you know I've played it, I feel a good amount of Lovecraftian board games. I guess I just maybe a little confused. Like I felt like there could have been some more breadcrumbs that would have maybe pointed at least me in the right direction. So what do we get after looking at these two? We see a game that is the first entry really in a series that has always been in Sherlock Holmes. It's got very big shoes to fill, not only for the preceding games, but to also make sure it stands out as I'm sure many people would just be bored even if it was just the Lovecraft paint, but the same old always running on Arkham like Sherlock. And I can see how they really tried to do things differently, unfortunately at the cost it seems at having as many cases. On the Lovecraft side, they really wanted to go into, I feel, the horror aspect, and this could be related to the other thing with Sherlock, and not make it the crusading heroes having their different monster of the week each case. That said, I also felt like they really didn't go as hard as they could have in giving that sort of Lovecraftian breadcrumbs and I guess Easter eggs almost, or at the very least, those who don't know the deepest cuts and the smallest signs that point to specific creatures or elder gods. And then of course, there is the one thing we shouldn't ask, were the mysteries any good? I did feel that because of the different mechanics of solving them, the mysteries did work out fine for the most part. And because you didn't have someone condescending giving you the answers of how they could have solved it better in less time, you're going to feel probably happy when you find the answers. I just feel that it probably succeeded in terms of trying to stand out. It did okay, maybe a little failing on the Lovecraftian side, but a decent job in the mysteries that really their biggest issue is maybe could have used a few more in the box. Crits and misses for Bureau of Investigation. Crits. This game is in the Sherlock Holmes family and I expected it to follow the same pattern, but they really tried to make this one deviate. After the first case, it was obvious each one tried to push the envelope a little bit more, meaning it wasn't the same old mystery solving pattern you were used to using in the previous Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective games. The final question process has been streamlined in such that A, you will not have to remember exact names and maybe be worried if you didn't name it and write it down specifically as they did. All you need to name are the location number and grid coordinates, which is much easier to look up and find and won't have many of those, I think we have the right answer kind of moments. In addition, without Sherlock there being able to tell you how he solved it much better than you and in a shorter period of time, you're not going to have that condescending feeling that you're being talked down to and that even though you may have solved the mystery, that you weren't as efficient as you should be. Mrs. It seems the cost for having each case with its own mechanics and style is having less cases. I was really disappointed to have half the number of cases as I would expect in some of the other ones. Even if there were just two more that were more similar to what we're used to in Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective, I would have found that to be a much better deal. In the process of streamlining the question section, as well as I believe because each case is so different from each other, they don't have either the Sherlock Holmes I mentioned before or any other of the usual people you can go to for help on answers. This is something I feel like I prefer to have, even if I don't feel like I need them. In particular, when it comes to a new mythos like Lovecraft, I feel having someone there who you can go to to find out more about what possibly could be the Lovecraftian creature, god, what have you, involved in this story, that someone can help leave some breadcrumbs to you there, so when you read the final solution, you're not nearly as shocked at what was involved. To be fully honest, I'm really torn on this. I mean, this is what I've been asking for for so long. I love Sherlock Holmes, Consulting Detective. I liked Mythos Tales, the concept, but Mythos Tales really, it felt very rough draftish, and I felt like if only Sherlock Holmes took the Lovecraft process and ran with it. And technically, that's what they did here. And I love that they have some cases doing the original style, but they really try to push the envelope with some new mystery styles that are worth you discovering what they are. 
But at the same time, I didn't get nearly that same excitement and being in the world of Lovecraft, uh, the way that they explain the mystery at the end through more of the outside author versus the in-game characters as much. I takes me out a bit more. There's no expert there. Like your Sherlock, while I like that he's not there for scoring, I do like that having that either the cast of characters or people you can go to in particular for things like the different monsters and cryptids that can give you little hints about what's going on, even if it isn't to help you solve the case, more just for the flavor of whatever the mystery is. I feel like they tried to walk this weird tightrope of balancing people who've never played the games before and more modernizing, streamlining them in the way that the I feel like the answer successfully do. But then on the other side, it seems like it was designed with the idea that this is going to be played by Sherlock fans, so we have to make each mystery different, which is good. But that came at the price of losing half the cases we're expecting. And then, of course, I, I mean... I just felt like I missed so many hints that, like, I did not know that this Lovecraftian entity was involved. I totally missed. There was, one, like, one or two things someone said, but I never made that connection with this entity kind of deal going on. Either way, the mysteries themselves, because they're different, though, I say were really fun. I wasn't nearly as satisfied from a Lovecraftian experience but I hope they continue this series. I hope this is one that they don't learn. think that, oh, because I didn't fall 100% in love with it, or I guess the general populace, they don't care what I say, uh, that they shouldn't make any more. This can Im be improved so much, even just by having more cases. There could be one that's a bit more campaign-y, similar to like the Jack the Ripper one for Sherlock, where maybe those would connect and you'd find out the final outcome. And I would love it if they had much more of these. They can even use the same systems as some of these. I think they're easily repeatable. It would not get tiresome as long as you mix it up like this. I really did enjoy this idea. I think the Lovecraftian world has more that more to offer in the sense that they can visit different places and also bend the rules, but maybe even get some other people to write their own mysteries for this. Let me know if you've had the chance to play through this. I know it's been released sort of in different stages around the world. So depending on where you are, this may have been out for a while or may have just been out. What your thoughts on this are? Have you played a lot of the previous Consulting Detective games? And do you think this did a good job? Do you feel like this did Lovecraft enough justice, the universe? Or do you think that they could have done a little bit differently? And of course, for those of you who have made it through Mythos Tales, whether you were original backer or you found it, how do you feel does this compare? Is this better? Because it is, you can actually get through all the mysteries and there aren't typos everywhere. Or did you like the system of the one investigator connected through all the storylines versus each of these being standalone? Love to hear from you in the comments down below. Thank you so much. Please like and subscribe. And if you think someone might be interested in this video, please send it to them and share it. It means the world to me. But until then, I'm Will, and this has been Roll for Crit.